Hey everyone, and thank you all for joining this meetup at the Collider. Many thanks to Stephen and Ali for inviting me to speak with you today. So why is AR on location so important? Why should every software engineer start thinking about literally adding another dimension to their creations? Because what separates the new wave of spatial computing, including AR and VR, from all previous computing waves is that for the first time, it allows us to interact in 3D with the world around us, just like we interacted with the real world in the past thousands of years of humanity. And the new wave represents a tremendous opportunity for all businesses, big tech players, investors, startups, and most of all, users. So what's the state of augmented reality in spatial computing today? Well, starting with users, the pandemic was tough on everyone, but many AR businesses have started to see tremendous growth over the past year as demand for remote technology has skyrocketed. Today, over 1 billion users are using AR, which is a third of all mobile users. What do they do with it? They play, buy, create, train, navigate. And what about businesses? Well, based on a recent survey, 91% of all businesses have either adopted or plan to adopt AR in the next few years. And what about tech giants? Tech giants are facing stagnated growth with the mobile industry and are afraid to miss the next big wave. So they're investing billions and allocating tens of thousands of employees. I'm talking about Facebook, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Qualcomm, Amazon, and some others. They're all developing software and hardware products, including free tools that are helping AR and VR penetrate into the mainstream. And then you have unicorns like Niantic and Snap, which have put AR at the center of their strategy, and it has paid off in a big way. Pokemon Go brought in $5 billion in five years, and Snapchat doubled their users last year, largely thanks to AR. Investments and m and activities also heating up. The focus has shifted to later stage investments, which is a sign of maturity for the industry. And what about smart glasses? Well, even today, hundreds of thousands of these devices are already being used for essential use cases in enterprises, mostly for remote express assistance. And consumers are also starting to use it in various niche use cases such as creators. You've all probably heard about the biggest AR deal ever where the US Army invested $2 billion, $22 billion in Microsoft HoloLens devices. In 2021, over $2 billion worth of head-worn AR or smart glasses will be sold. We're talking about dozens of companies vying for dominance in the new spatial computing era. And of course, Apple's imminent introduction of their device in a year or two is expected to even further accelerate the adoption. We should see smart glasses in the mainstream within the next couple of years. I've seen a lot in AR for the past 15 years. I founded the first venture-backed startup in the States in 2008, was later acquired by Apple and became the foundation for ARKit, Apple's AR platform. Since then, I've also helped build the XR ecosystem. I founded AWE, which is the world's largest XR community with a series of uh, events, meetups, workshops, and really helping the community learn, connect, and grow. And since 2016, I founded Super Ventures as the first uh, fund dedicated to investing in early stage AR startups. So I've seen a lot in it, but I can tell you that AR is getting into its most exciting stage right now. The computing infrastructure of the future is being built as we speak. The race to map the world in 3D is on with startups leading the charge, but tech giants like Facebook, Apple, Niantic, Snap and others acquiring these leaders. Just in the last uh, 18 months, we've seen acquisitions of 6D.ai, Scape AR, Ubiquity 6, Immersal, and many other startups in this space. The focus is really on creating persistent and shareable AR content that everyone can see anywhere they go. Uh, currently, users may experience this on their mobile devices, 
but soon on smart glasses where AR is always on. So in 2017, I coined the term AR cloud to capture this idea. I believe that until the AR cloud is prevalent, AR will only be a cool tool. But with the AR cloud, we can see, interact, and create AR content in the real world in a way that persists and can be accessible by many, many users. And that completely changes the way we live and work. And as you hear today from Stephen and Ali, the stack is already here today. In the next few years, uh, when AI continues to be tightly integrated with AR, it will help computers study the world, capture spaces and objects, and learn how people do things. It will allow us to accumulate the data and create a visual knowledge base about how the world works. I call it spatial Wikipedia, accessible to anyone, anywhere, right in their field of view. And this could improve how we do everything in our life and work across every single industry and new use case you can think of. And along the process, we expect to see some new giants being crowned that will rule that new 3D mapped world. So here's the question for you. Are there any engineers in this audience that are ready to take on the challenge? In other words, can you afford to stay on the sidelines while the most important internet infrastructure since Google Index is being built? I invite you all to learn from Stephen and Ali and join the movement. Thank you very much. Really good to see you here. Take care.